everyone, welcome back to the channel. This video is all about the role of ChatGPT in the university education sector. Hiya, if you're new to the channel, my name is Caroline. I'm a lecturer in physics here based at a UK university. And we've just finished, well, the undergraduate semester before we go onto our winter vacation. And this last semester, I have suddenly, if you like, become aware of chat GPT within the actual kind of classroom setting. Now, if you've never heard of chat GPT, think of like a search engine, Google or Yahoo, but then think of one that's able to generate a tailored real time answer in a particular tone to a question that you ask. Um, so, for example, you could ask ChatGPT to write a poem about a certain historical event um, in the style of a certain poet, for example. And, you know, in pretty much real time, it will generate that poem for you. It's a very powerful piece of technology that we can engage with, um, both as academics and as students. It's also free. So you can download this and have this technology on your phone or on your laptop. But what it's doing is it's changing the educational landscape. So how we learn, how we teach, how we mark, how we assess students. Um, and I have really noticed it over the last semester. And I wanted to maybe explore whether you've noticed it as well. In previous years, then, you know, we know that students can access textbooks, online resources, you know, Google can bring up nice internet resources to help people learn. Um, but what we haven't had before really is a platform that can write tailored answers to specific questions. So as a lecturer, what I found myself doing across the last semester is taking the technical questions that I would be asking my students so specific questions about physics, physics laws, physics properties, physics calculations. And I've been putting them into chat GPT to see what the answer that it generated was going to be like. And quite often the answer that it generates is rather good. You know, if I ask it some, some year one physics question, quite often the, the computer will generate um, an answer that has the right equations in it, the right theory in it, typically the correct logic in it. It's not to say it's perfect. Um, and there is quite frequently mathematical errors. So when we actually put the numbers into the equations, it gives out the wrong answer. So the chat GPT has got the methodology right, it's got the equations right, but then when it puts the mathematical numbers in to get the final figure, if you like, there might be then a miscalculation at that stage. But it's still a really powerful way to be able to get the basics and the, the underlying physics, if you like, of a particular question. You could also use it to write, you know, introductions to essays. You can use it to write abstracts. Um, one thing you can use it for very powerfully is to write computer code. So I, I saw a lecture um, online given by a Harvard, ex-Harvard academic, and he was talking about how computer coders are now not just coding from first principles and kind of going on the internet to get coding support, but actually using things like ChatGPT to write code for them, which they then use that code within their own software frames. And I've, I've had an experiment with this. So I have asked ChatGPT to write certain computational programs in various computing languages. And yeah, it gives you code. And again, maybe that code isn't completely perfect, but it does give you a starting point that you could then at least use in your kind of your problem, whatever you're trying to solve. So for students now, this is a really potentially powerful new resource. It's free to access. So you could have it on your phone, on your computer. There are now paid for versions as well. Um, but as I said, you can get a free version that does, you know, a decent job from what I've seen. 
And so it poses the question now as academics, how do we want students to interface with this new technology and how do we use that to support student learning and understanding? Because, of course, we could set now a student an assessment, a piece of coursework, and they may go home and rather than opening up the encyclopedia or giving it a Google search, they could put that assignment question into ChatGPT and get, at the very least, an outline of some form of answer. And so what do you do? Do you allow students to use ChatGPT? Do you ask students not to work with it when they're using assessed questions at home? But then are you denying students from using a resource that in like when they graduate and they're out in the real world and industry, they would be allowed to use? Um, do I use it? So will I use it to maybe pull together ideas for publications and essays? That could be a very quick and efficient way of mining many data sources without me having to put the legwork into it. If students can use things to write coursework kind of drafts and essays and that's allowed is it allowed for me to use the same software to mark certain elements of that work there's all sorts of these questions now sort of hitting the academic sector um, and it's just going to be fascinating I think over the next probably couple of years as to how the tools how these kind of software platforms how this kind of AI technology is embraced and used and you know universities are we're meant to be at the forefront of scholarly endeavour and embracing the new technology, but also using it in a correct and ethical way. And how those two things sit together, so maximising the new technology, but doing so in an appropriate way, is going to be really interesting to see how educational providers decide to you know, use that technology. And so I just thought I'd throw it out there. Um, have you been using AI-based generative kind of language-based software prediction apps? Uh, have your students been using ChatGPT? Do you use ChatGPT? Do you think it's going to make a massive impact on the academic sector? Um, let me know in the comments. It's a really dynamic and live space, this use of AI. Um, and it's obviously, it's not just the use of AI within the educational sector. You know, it's being used all over the place, ChatGPT, to do all sorts of different things. Um, and other software's coming online. We've got um, AI systems that make images and pictures, AI systems that can predict and play music. There's all sorts of things happening. But I think I personally just really noticed and felt it within the university in this last semester. And I think it's because the platform is now available freely and open source and cheap, so you haven't got to pay anything if you don't want to, to the student population. And so I'd love to know your thoughts on how you have found over the last semester if AI has impacted the way that you're teaching or delivering class within a university. I'm sure we'll discuss this more next year, but I thought I'd throw it out there <laughs> towards the end of 2023. I hope whatever stage you are in at your academic, whether you're rounding off your, your kind of some PhD research before you break for a holiday, or maybe you're chasing to get a last piece of assessment in, maybe you already are enjoying a few days of holiday. I hope you're having a good and a safe time. Um, I will be back, what date is it next week? Yes, I'll be back next week with another video. Um, but in the meantime, look after yourselves. If you're new around to hit the subscribe button, where we talk all things academic, university and kind of scholarly stuff. But yeah, have a good, safe week and I'll see you next Monday for another academic video. Bye.